Well, hello, this is Mr. Jern again, and I am here to talk to you about Principles of Engineering Activity 4.1.1, the data exploration. And you may notice right away this is not on the Inkling site. And the reason for that is because I found the Inkling site to be a little, the formatting was a little too confusing. And so we're going to use OneNote instead. Uh, that way you can just write all your answers in OneNote or type them in. Uh, draw if you would like. You can then, if, you, if, uh, if necessary, print it out and then tape it or paste it into your engineering notebook. If you want to do it directly into your engineering notebook, you certainly still can. Uh, but uh, the, like I said, the Inkling site, just the formatting there with the data tables was just a little confusing for me. So I start with a little bit of an introduction. We're going to be focusing mostly on probability. And I pasted the from the notes, I pasted the, some of the equations in here, the ones you're going to be using for this activity, such as uh, this first one, f of x is equal to n sub x divided by n, where the f sub x is the relative frequency of outcome x. Here, let me just give you an example. <laughs> Instead of x, let's say heads. You toss, a you toss a coin 10 times. What is the frequency of heads, okay, rather than an x? Then you just take the number of heads, that you, t that you got in those 10 tosses divided by 10 because you did 10 tosses. Pretty simple. Then we have the probability of X, or in our case, the probability of heads. And so what is the probability of heads? Well, you take the frequency of heads, which you just calculated, you divide it by the frequency of all events. In this case, there's 10. You had 10 events, and so you'll, you'll get the probability of heads. Hopefully you get I mean, probably, no, you know what? We'll just say usually or most times often you'll get five out of 10 or something really close to that, obviously. So you'll need a coin, you'll need a dice or digital dice, which I have linked there, and a calculator, of course. So it's pretty straightforward. Uh, what is the probability that the illustrated game spinner will land on blue? So just define the experiment, define the sample space. Okay, go back and look at these notes to get these terms. Okay, define the event and solve the probability. Now, one nice thing about OneNote is if you see like you don't have enough space here, you can just go bloop and look at that. Now you have room to write. Then use the equations I mentioned up above to, uh, to, to calculate the probability of a flip coin landing on its head. Uh, and then same thing here. Okay, instead of a coin, uh, well, it is a coin, but f uh, what's the probability of ever landing on its head four times out of six trials? I'm getting a little too deep in the weeds here. Let's just move on. You can figure that part out. If you don't, let me know. All right, then we get to questions like this. Calculate the probability of flipped coin landing on heads through experimentation. That means you're going to actually do this. So you will actually get a, it says a fair coin that's, a necessary word in engineering because we want to make sure it's just a regular old coin, a fair coin. So, so no, no trick coins or weighted coins or anything like that. Um, and you know, just all you got to do is do one toss and let's say you get heads, you could put a little X there. Let's say the next toss you get tails, you could put an X there. The next toss you get tails again, you put an X there. That's all you got to do. Okay. If you want to put this in your engineering notebook directly, you can do that. Okay. Then you're going to calculate the relative frequency of the coin landing on. So again, just scroll back up, look for the relative frequency equation and use that here. Then you're going to toss a coin 50 times. Okay, you can see, again, you do the same thing. Just mark which, which you got each, tri each trial. Okay, literally that's all you got to do. And then you total it down here and you're good. Calculate the relative frequency. So once again, you just want to go back and look at the uh, equation. Use the equation correctly. Uh, calculate the relative frequency, and then describe the, the relationship between, here, just a question to answer. So go ahead and read that and answer it yourself. Next, you're going to create a histogram. Okay, that's the thing that looks a little bit like a bar chart, but it's not quite a bar chart. You could click here and you get a, um, it's a Google, Google examples of histograms, okay? It'll be a little more clear if you're not sure. Go back to the notes if, you're, if you want to check it out or ask me. Uh, now, for this, at first, do not actually roll any dice. Don't actually roll any dice, okay? And keep in mind, rolling a two and a three is not the same as rolling a three and a two, okay? So you have two dice, it's, they're not the same thing, okay? You got dice number one, dice number two, or dice number A, dice letter B, whatever you want to call it. So 5A, 
list all the possible events that will result in the sum. Remember, you're not rolling any dice just yet. So for example, a one and a one will result in a sum two. So you would write down here a one and one. So maybe you'd go like one and one. And then to get a three, well, what are all the possibilities of getting a three? How about one and a, oops, that's still the ah, wrong one. Got to look down. And a two, then maybe a two and a one. And are there any more? So that's the kind of thing you got to think about, right? Then 5B, list the frequency of the sum by telling the number of possible events that will result in the sum. All right, so it looks like there's just one possibility here. Right now I've only got two, but just double check my work. I'm just doing an example. So there might be three or more, I don't know. You gotta think about this yourself. And do the same thing for all those possibilities. Okay, Ooh, let's not do it that way, how about? And then 5C, create the histogram where the sum is on the x-axis and the frequency is on the y-axis. So on the x-axis, and again, you can make more room if you need it. You could draw, you could use your stylus, whatever you want. You can even do this in Excel if you know how to do it in Excel and paste it in here, that's fine. Um, but on the x-axis, you're gonna put the sum. So down, down here, you will put 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Just blah, 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 down here. And then frequency is on the x-axis. So here's the frequency. You're gonna put those numbers on the x-axis. And remember, you're making a histogram. So just, it'll look like a bar chart almost, okay? So just make a bar chart going up to the number that it should, histogram. And again, Google what a histogram looks like. You could talk to me if you're not sure, okay? Then some more probability questions, okay? And you answer those. Step nine, simultaneously roll two dice 50 times and record your data below. You can use real dice, as long as they're just plain old regular dice, or you can click here and roll virtual dice if you prefer, as long as they're just normal dice. All right, so um, here's dice number one, dice number two, and I think I'm gonna see if I could format this a little bit better, but you're going to record it. So trial number one, what did you get? Maybe, maybe dice number one, die number one was a three, and die number two was a four. That's it. And what's your total? Well, that would be seven, okay? Do that again for dice, that's your first roll. Roll again, roll again, roll again, roll again, until you get 50 trials, okay? Then down here, it wants to know the relative frequency of rolling this. Okay, so what I did just to kind of hopefully help out and not confuse you at all is I put the equation here again. So where is it? Come here. There it is, just peeking out over there. So I put the equation down there. You can just roll back up to the top if you want. It's the same equation. I just put it here uh, for your convenience. And then we have some conclusion questions, all right? Uh, the first two are fairly straightforward. The third one, I would definitely refer back to the notes, okay? This is very similar to uh, what we discussed in the notes, and you're gonna to wanna to, um, walk through that and look through that closely. All right, good luck. You can do this, no problem. Take care.